Hi, I'm Evan, and this is the Mechanical Laser Show. The Laser Show is a device that projects a pattern by quickly moving the laser. It's all mechanical, there's no electronic parts except for the laser. It's all 3D printed, and it's all free to print. All the links to the parts are below. In this video, I'm going to talk about how it works, how it was designed, and how to print it. Alright, so let's get into how it works. The basic idea is a laser traces the path repetitively. Due to the persistence of vision effect, you see the whole image at once. And in order for this to work well, you have to trace the image around five times a second or faster. As you can see, the back is held stationary and the front is actuated by two cams. So what is a cam? Cam is a common mechanical component. For example, it's used in car engines and the cylinder heads to actuate the valves. The basic idea behind a cam is it's a circle that's rotating that has a follower that rides on top, but it's not a perfect circle. The radius of the circle increases and decreases to cause the follower to move up and down in one dimension. As you can imagine, a complex set of radiuses will result in a complex path of travel for the follower. The laser show uses two cams, basically one in the x-axis and one in the y-axis, to actuate the laser, and every rotation of the cams results in one tracing of the path. The cams rotate at five times a second, but it'd be difficult to rotate an input crank at five times a second, so the mechanical laser show uses a five to one ratio between the input gear and the cam gear to achieve that. Now let's talk about the cam profile design. This is the most complicated part of the project and the most interesting in my personal opinion. So here's the input. As you can see, it's a series of points that form the path the laser should travel along. The laser starts by going to that top point. Then I'm gonna rotate both the cams by X amount of degrees and it's gonna go to the next point. I'm gonna rotate it by the same amount, it's gonna go to the next point, etc. So the idea is for each one of these input points, I wanna map it to one point on each of the two output cams. So what's the math for that? Let's derive it now. So it all comes down to this triangle. This is the triangle between the two centers of the cams and the point I'm trying to target on the input path. As you can see, I'm trying to target the far right point on the input path, which is the 22nd point out of 35 points. I've labeled all three of the points here on this triangle, and the first thing let's try to find is little a. So what are the nodes? We know a, b, and c in terms of their x and y coordinates, and we also know n, which I'm defining as the number of points in the pattern, 35, and i, which is the index of the current point we're trying to target, and so it's 22. To find A, we use the right triangle equation, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, rearranged to find the hypotenuse. But we're not really trying to find A, what we're really trying to find is the radius of the cam, which is just A minus the radius of the laser pen. Okay, so now that we found the radius, now what we need to do is find the, the angle at which that radius is protruding from the cam. Let's start by finding the angle of B. Using another right triangle equation, B is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite over the adjacent. What we are really trying to find is the location of the BC vector with a relation to the cam. I've drawn the blue arrow as a reference point on the cam. When the pattern started, it was pointing right. Now it's right rotated k sub x radians. We know that every time it goes to the next point, the cam rotates 1 35th of a rotation. So the amount that it's rotated is 2 pi over 35 times 22 since we're at the 22nd point. Finally, we can find what theta of x is, and that's 2 pi minus k of x plus the angle of b. I've drawn the same diagram below, rotated, so the frame of reference is at the zero rotation of the cam. As you can see, we have theta of x and r of x, which are basically polar coordinates telling us where big x is. Using some basic math, we can convert that back to rectangular coordinates. Now we have all the math we need to take a point on the input path and convert it to a point on the output x cam. To convert to the point on the output y cam, we do pretty much the same math with some minor deviations. So we take that, the input pattern, we take that math, and we apply it to every point on the input pattern, and we get the two complete X and Y cams. Now there's one simplification I made in that explanation that I want to go into a little more detail now, and that's the size of the input path. As you can see, I have the choice to make the input path much larger. Let's see what effect that has on the cams. As you can see, the radius of the cams now varies much more. But this has a huge downside, which it causes these big divots. These divots increases friction between the laser and the cams drastically and is not acceptable. Basically, I want to make the, the input pattern as big as possible where it doesn't have the divots and results in a convex polygon as a cam. Okay, so that's the entirety of the cam design. So now let's talk a little bit about how to print it. This chart is pretty self-explanatory about how to print each part, but after you print the parts, if they're not perfect, I might recommend going in with an X-Acto knife and cleaning them up a little bit. Of course, in addition to printing all the parts, you have to purchase the laser and the rubber bands. Both of those I think I purchased for around $10 or less, and both of the ones I got I thought were pretty good, so I highly recommend them and I've linked them below. So that's pretty much the video. 
I want to talk really quickly about myself. As I said, my name's Evan. I'm a software developer by trade, but I've always been really interested in mechanical engineering, and I have a couple other models on Thingiverse you can go check out. And since a lot of people have been asking, I do want to admit that I have an ulterior motive for creating these videos. And that's that I'm trying to break into the hand modeling industry. So if you like what you see, maybe next time you're looking through a watch catalog, you'll see these babies on display. Wish me the best of luck, and thanks for watching.